duodenal jejunostomy for duodenal obstruction from annular pancreas. The office with recurrent vomiting and a 20 pound weight loss. He had symptoms of duodenal obstruction and ongoing obstructive symptoms which recurred despite serial dilatation. He remained otherwise constitutionally well and had no major medical comorbidities. Imaging showed the typical appearance of an annular pancreas causing circumferential enveloping of the duodenum. Note the proximal dilated stomach. Annular pancreas is a relatively rare abnormality and a cause of recurrent vomiting in adults. It is an embryological abnormality caused by defective migration of the ventral pancreatic bud, which then envelops the second part of the duodenum. A duodenal jejunostomy was preferred here. The ports were placed, as described in the picture, including an 11 mm assistant port to facilitate subsequent robot docking. First step of the operation is to create a rulum that will lay without tension in the supracolic compartment. Once this is confirmed, the mesentery is divided close to the bowel. The gap is widened to facilitate placement of a linear cutting stapler, which is used to divide the bowel and confirm orientation of the root. Scissors with electrocautery are then used to create enterotomies on both sides for subsequent creation of the jejuno jejunostomy. Here, the gap is widened with a bowel grasper. Corresponding enterotomy is similarly made, and another firing of a linear cutting stapler is used to create the jejuno jejunostomy. The enterotomy of the common limb is then closed with a running 4 or V-lock stitch and a subsequent seromuscular 3 or vicral stitch. Dissection is then commenced in the supracolic compartment. Note the inflammation leading to adhesions near the gallbladder from recurrent episodes of pancreatitis and or duodenal obstruction. The hepatic flexure is taken down widely to facilitate later cockerization, and this can be seen here. In this particular case, this has been achieved laparoscopically, but can also be achieved with robotic dissection. Once the hepatic flexure has been taken down in its entirety, views of the duodenum are obtained. The annular pancreas is now seen on screen uh, in the following images, causing circumferential obstruction of the duodenum. Note the proximal part of the duodenum is comparatively more dilated and sits without tension with increasing mobilization. It's important to know that annular pancreas does confer a higher than the usual risk of pancreatic adenocarcinoma Though, in, though this is a relative risk and the absolute risk itself remains small. Historically, annular pancreas was treated with resection, but over time, diversion with the form of a duodenal jejunostomy has thought to be the best option. Gastrojejunostomy does exist as a potential option, but is thought to be inferior due to the risk of bile reflux, as well as the theoretical risk of a closed loop syndrome between an intact pylorus and duodenal obstruction from annular pancreas. Ultimately, with further mobilization and close to complete cockerization of the duodenum, the annular pancreas can be clearly seen, and importantly, the part of the duodenum proximal to annular pancreas sits without tension. This is then approximated to the previously created rule limb, which lies without tension via a defect in the mesocolon, now in the supracolic compartment. A two-layer anastomosis was created for this purpose, and this was done by docking a robot. 3 ovicle was used to create a posterior seromusculus row, and this can be seen at present. The orientation of these limbs is to create an isoperistaltic join. Once the posterior row is complete, the jejunum lies in the supracolic compartment in the proper orientation. At the end of this process, enterotomies are created on both limbs of the duodenum 
and the jejunum respectively, keeping in mind that there is a posterior cuff of tissue for the back wall to be stitched as far as the actual anastomosis is concerned. Hook cautery from the robot is used to create an enterotomy and these are kept even keeping in mind that both the dilated duodenum as well as the jejunum have a tendency to expand with further tension. Four avicral stitches then used to create a continuous anastomosis. The back wall is stitched first making, sh making sure that mucosa is grabbed with every bite and subsequently the anterior wall is stitched grabbing bites of mucosa but also ensuring that the mucosa is inverted. Here this technique can be seen employed with the use of the robot. In order to invert the mucosa further, a canal technique is used The anastomosis is hence completed and following this a further four avicral stitches used for another seromuscular layer analogous to the posterior layer which set up the anastomosis. Thus a two layer side to side functional end to end duodenojejunostomy is formed in the supracolic compartment. Our patient was discharged on postoperative day three and has had no similar symptoms to his preoperative state on routine follow up in clinic.